Hey everybody! So last episode we went over the wardrobe styling and the concept for my red and white shoot. And when I have a shoot like this, the next thing I like to do is practice my lighting setup, which is why Emma is still here. Those of you that are astute will notice Emma's not in the exact same outfit, and that's because I've just been playing with this convertible dress for other concepts for other shoots. But she's got enough on for the lighting of this, and what's really something that I want to think about is, okay, I'm doing a white dress, white feathers, white background. So I need to get my exposure so that these feathers have a little bit of an edging, that they don't totally blow out. So that's something you want to consider. So have you ever tried to do a high key setup and you generally need pretty expensive modifiers? And why are they expensive? Because they're huge. You don't need expensive modifiers to do a high key look. And if you're not normally doing high key look, why would you want to spend a lot of money on some big hard to store modifiers? Um, sometimes I just shoot through uh, the diffuser of my five in one panel. But that's not what we're doing today. Today I'm going to use a few from home objects and one piece of fabric just to help me out, but you don't really need it, to show you how I'm gonna pull off this high key look at the shoot with Liz coming up. My first modifier is a sheet. And this is gonna be in the background. And I'm going to shoot through it. Second modifier, shower curtain. It's a white shower curtain. And you can see that this is one of those kind of fabric-y kinds that's um, kind of a little, it's got like a little bit of white opaqueness to it, but it's not one of those plastic ones. Light can pass through this. Because I know that sheet is pretty wrinkled, I could do a few things. I could iron it and pull it out really straight. And if you want to do that, great. I bought an entire bolt of tool for about $12. And I'm going to use the tool on my background to fluff it out. And what that's going to give me, I believe, is a nice ethereal look. So it's not gonna look like wrinkles, it's just gonna look like some texture. And the light will still pass through it. So let's talk about my lights. And what I wanted to say also is you could do this with speed lights, you could do this with any kind of strobe. So here's my setup. I have three light stands, two crossbars, and this baby. These things are great. I use it all the time when I need to make a corner. And you can see it sits on top of your light stand, one light stand, your corner light stand, and your two crossbars can hit it and you wind up with a corner. It's great. We'll put the link in the description. You're also gonna need some sort of clips. I like these guys doesn't matter you just need some good clips so that you can clip your background to the crossbar so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that up and then we're gonna figure out the lighting I've got my shower curtain and my sheet up I'm going to add the tool now you'll see that I've added a bunch of clips on the top this is simple all I'm gonna do is drape and loop drape and loop drape and loop I am NOT worried about my background going all the way down to the floor because honestly, I hate the floor in this room. It's a carpet. So I am going to be shooting upper body. That's how I generally shoot when I'm in this room. If I want to do full body, I actually use my garage. So let me get that tool up. Okay, I've got my setup. And now I'm going to go ahead and do some test shots. And I just want to go over something really quick. So you want to bring your photography to the next level. You want to make sure that people say, wow, that's amazing, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. So why am I doing this exercise? Because it's part of a good, successful pre preparation. When Liz shows up, I'm going to have this all set up. I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to have had time to play with my camera settings, play with my light settings. Without my model being here, I can give all of my attention to Liz. And one of the things that I found is if I can dial in my lighting in advance and it's something that I don't normally do, then this kind of prep will make all the difference in the world. Now, if Liz was coming over and she just wanted to do like maybe a, a low key deep shadow thing with, you know, a sparkle background, I'd be like, 
I don't even need to practice that. I know exactly how to do it, but I don't do high key very often, which is why I don't have super huge modifiers to do it. So that's why I'm gonna test it in advance. You don't wanna waste your model's time. If you test your light setup in advance, you are going to be more respected by your model. And that means they're gonna be more willing to work with you. So that's my tip on why we're doing this. Okay, so here's something to understand about high key and setting up your camera settings. To me, at least, high key is not about washing out the entire photo so that everything is super, super white. No, it is about having lots of brightness, but I still want shadows. I still want my face of my model to be defined. So the way I'm doing that is this light is, this light is her main light behind the curtain, but it's actually going to pass, if I take my hand, it's passing in front of my model's face. I want it to wrap. I don't want it to hit her square on. I want shadows. I want a, sh I want a short pattern, short lighting pattern, so I have a shadow on the cheek that faces the camera, and I also want a shadow under her chin so the light is a little higher than her head. The light behind her is pretty straight behind her, but off to the side a little bit. So this way it's going to provide some backlighting. It's going to, you know, Liz has hair. I just got, Emma's hair keeps falling off, so I just got tired of it. But Liz also has a really cool new cut where she has like an undercut. So this is all shaped, so I really want to shoot with her face going this way. And this whole lighting setup is designed for Liz to look at that light. Or she can look forward but I'm not gonna have her look in the other direction because I don't wanna light the back of her head. I wanna light her face. Here are my camera settings. ISO 100, F11, with a 200th of a second shutter speed. Now the shutter speed really isn't that big a deal because if I was to shoot this, these settings, and didn't fire my lights, it would be black. So the lights, are really the effective shutter speed. And the only time I worry about having a, sh a longer shutter speed is if I wanna bring in ambient light. And in this case, I'm not gonna to wanna to do that. So I'm going as high as I can on my Canon to stay synced with my lights, which is 200th of a second. The next thing I'm doing is F11. I want, to, I want her in sharp focus. I wanna capture the details of these feathers. I wanna capture the details in the fabric. I also want deep shadows in the areas where she is. So let's see if we've got that. I'm gonna take a shot and I will share it with you guys. Right off the bat, this looks really good. I'm, I, I can see a definition between my shadows of my feathers and the background. That's critical to me. You could lose those white feathers against this background really, really fast. I can see a few wrinkles in the background. Not really worried about that because that's so easy to get out, but they also have a nice texture, so not super worried about that. I think if I wanted to brighten this up a little bit, I could raise my ISO a bit. But her face has a great, I am not touching these settings. This is what I'm gonna go into my shoot with. And honestly, if I wanted to change it from here, I would likely drive my light up a little bit instead of playing with these settings. But right now, as you can see, um, this looks, this looks like a great starting place. So, in two weeks, I'm gonna be sharing episode three. Episode three is gonna be a little longer and it's gonna be probably a little crazier because Liz and I get kind of weird. But we're gonna be shooting this look on Liz and going for that high key dramatic look. So stay tuned and if you missed the last one, I'll have it linked so you can go check it out and see where all the inspiration came from and how I put together a DIY wardrobe. So looking forward to this and if you have any questions or comments just let me know put them in the comments don't forget to like subscribe all that shit and thanks for watching bye bye